This is Canadian Cult Cinema. This film was picked via a poll on our Facebook page. If you would like to have a say in what we review next, please join Canadian Cult Cinema on Facebook. DEF CON 4 is a 1985 Canadian post-apocalyptic film. It's probably best remembered for its awesome poster art. Just look at it. It's incredible. What kid wouldn't want to grab that from a video store shelf in the 80s? Unfortunately, the cover art doesn't really represent the film. DEF CON 4 tells the story of three astronauts, Jordan played by Kate Lynch, she was in Ivan Reitman's Meatballs, Captain Walker played by John Walsh, and Howe played by Tim Choate. They are on a long mission to circle the globe in a space station armed with nuclear missiles. This is North America's last line of defense. The Third World War breaks out and the space station does nothing to defend North America. Look, we are supposed to fire on our own discretion if we have evidence that an attack has started and we believe that War One can't get through. We'll launch when I say we'll launch, okay? The world is utterly destroyed except for a few small pockets that may be inhabitable. They continue to circle the Earth for several months when the space station receives a strange transmission and begins to crash. Not a very good landing. They survive the impact but don't know where they are. They land in some sand and Captain Walker starts to dig his way out when he's suddenly pulled from the space station. We will later find out that Walker has been eaten by terminals, who are humans who have been turned cannibalistic and insane by radiation. And we don't actually hear too much from them later. Jordan was knocked unconscious in the crash, so several hours later, Howe ventures out in search for help. He escapes the terminals, but quickly gets captured by Vinny, played by the excellent character actor Mari Chaikin. Vinny is a survivalist who has fortified his home slash shack with barbed wire and booby traps. Vinny is also keeping a girl named JJ locked in the cellar. JJ is played by Lenore Zahn, now she can probably be considered one of Canada's scream queens. She is starred in Happy Birthday to Me, Visiting Hours, and American Nightmare just to name a few. But she's probably best remembered by 90s kids as the voice of Rogue from X-Men the Animated Series. You look nervous as a long tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. How and JJ escape Vinny's shack, only to be recaptured by him minutes later. And then they are all captured by a pseudo-military group. The prisoners are taken back to an army compound that is mostly made out of trash, where they are thrown into cages. It's at this point that Howe is reunited with Jordan. They are then taken before Gideon, the teenage leader of this group. How did a teenager become leader of these militants? Well, the film tries to explain it. What happened here? I mean, how did this kid Gideon get control of all these people? He has his ways. Gideon wants to sail away to a safe zone, one of the only few radiation-proof spots around the world. It's at this point that our heroes fight to capture Gideon's boat and sail away themselves. But first, they have to battle the tyrannical leader and his men. Oh, and there's an active nuke in the space station that has crashed and it's counting down to an explosion. Wait, wait, wait. This well must be empty. DEF CON 4 is a fun, low-budget, post-apocalyptic film, but it does suffer from some poor character development and the storyline seems a little bit muddled, but that being said, it's definitely not without its charm. The movie doesn't state where it takes place, but there are some glaring hints, like several bottles of Alexander Keats, and even an arrow pointing directly towards Nova Scotia on a globe. There's also another nice little piece of Canadiana. A Canadian social insurance card is used as part of a tripwire trap on Vinny's farm. It is a real sin card and belongs to Cordell Wynn, the movie's line producer. <laughs> DEFCON 4 was directed by Paul Donovan. Him and his brother Michael founded Salter Street Films, a Halifax-based production company. They would later find success producing television shows like Codco, This Hour Has 22 Minutes, and Lex. IMDB also lists Tony Randall as an uncredited director. It's unclear what Randall did, but he definitely worked on the film in post-production. He's also responsible for bringing Godzilla 1985 to North America. Now, parts of Death Con 4's score were used in that film as well. The score was composed by Christopher Young, who has composed music for many, many horror films. But probably most notably, he's the man that gave us the music for Hellraiser. 
A fun little side note, the US Military Defense Condition System, DEFCON, actually counts down from 5, which is normal peacetime conditions, to DEFCON 1, which is the maximum readiness for nuclear war. So despite the film's title implying that DEFCON 4 was reached during a full-scale nuclear war, DEFCON 4 is actually only being slightly more prepared for war than standard peacetime conditions. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and share button, and if you want to see more reviews from Canada's cult cinema, please hit subscribe. We're in the early days of this channel, but there are some videos up already, like my review of the Canadian psychological thriller Pin from 1988, and the excellent modern-day slasher Tragedy Girls from 2017. I'd love to know what some of your favorite Canadian cult films are. Please leave a comment, and until next time, see ya.